it is Wednesday night. We are back into our study. We're studying how to study the Word. I think it's very important for every Christian to take time to learn how to do this. Amen? Amen. Amen. Does any, anybody remember any of the methods we discussed last week? Yes. All of them. Yes, all of them, she said. Uh, she, she did. She wrote them uh, down. Paragraph study. Oh, chapter study. Paragraph study. Verse study. Book study. Conductive. Synthetic. Read simple things. Read vain inferences. Write. Read our Somebody took down some notes. Awesome. Then you thought I was just talking. Who <laughs> <laughs> can remember some of the different type of people that study the Bible that we discussed? Well, there's the people that like to do their, they're the lone wolf that likes to study alone. Yes. There's the techie. Yes. There's the techie and the old fashioned, that's an extra vote. There's Adrian. There's Adrian. <laughs> he likes. Adrian, if you're watching online, I, I'm teaching, buddy. I can't talk on the phone. You should know that. You should know that. That's okay. All right, so <clears throat> tonight we're going to study a very specific type of method of study, okay? And tonight we are studying the soap method. How many has ever heard of this method? This is actually a method I've, picked, I've heard of for a while and I finally picked up and started working on it the last couple of years. Um, Chuck, if you don't mind. Make sure everybody gets one of these. You know, give me that top one. That's my initial. Yeah. Yeah. And I'd like to see you guys fill this out as we go tonight, if you don't mind. The SOAP method. The SOAP method is scripture. Actually, I got my notes here. I actually, this is kind of expensive, but I saw it, thought it looked cool, so I thought I'd buy one. And I knew it would teach me how to do the SOAP method, and that's what this little book is. You can buy these. I think they're a little expensive, but it does. It teaches you a lot about this method. Did you go on Amazon? Um, actually, I've seen it through Facebook, believe it or not. And um, the book was 40 bucks. <laughs> but hey, so you have the scripture, observation, application, and prayer, and thus that's how you get the word soap. Oh, it is. I never heard of that. Didn't you know that? Scripture. You read the passage. Well, first thing you do, you do is you read the passage. Um, quite often, uh, you'll do like a whole chapter out of a book or something, or do your reading for the day. And then what you're going to do is you're going to go back over that reading and find that one verse that, or two verses or whatever that really jumped out at you and kind of spoke to you, okay? And what you're going to do then is you're going to write down that those one or two verses, okay? Even if it's printed out for you, always write it down. Can anyone tell me why? You'll remember it more. Exactly. Exactly. This could be one verse or several verses. Um, select whichever verse or verses out of your reading that you would like to dig into further or that you find relevant to your current situation. Okay? Um, and as you can see at the top of the page, we have one. We're going to be studying Jude chapter 3 tonight. Don't start writing yet, please. We're going to go through these, and then we're going to do it all together. Kathy? <laughs> we will in a minute. I copied you. <laughs> Next is observation. That's funny. You said you grab one of those. That's all. Stack. You just need one. You're fine. Observation. Write down what you observe out of the text. In other words, when you initially look at it, what it says to you. Then write down what it means. Because quite often we can look at a text and get our initial feelings, but then when we open up a concordance and so on and so forth, or a lexicon or a dictionary or encyclopedia, it's, it tells us what it means. Yeah, um, we get an actual translation of what it means, okay? 
then application. Write down how this scripture applies to you personally. Because here's the thing. There's one translation, one true meaning of every scripture, but there are multiple applications. Numerous applications of a scripture. And then finally, prayer. Do I need to go back? I can. Yeah. It's just a click of a mouse. Yeah. <laughs> Could sometimes uh, it apply one way and then another time you read it, it could apply another way? I have read scripture and applied to me one way. Three months later, it was totally different. I have read scripture and applied to me and I lived it that way for 15 years. Then all of a sudden, one day, things change and it's something totally different. I have read scripture, lived it one way my whole entire life, then I came here. Sucker <laughs> you. It's completely different. I, I mean, it's out wrong on all levels. All levels. <laughs> Are you saying that's the fine print that you didn't see? That's the fine print I didn't see. <laughs> Prayer. At the end of it, and I know it's going to sound funny to do this, write out a prayer about what you read, how it applies your life, and what you need to do. I know some people are like, why don't I just pray? Why do I need to write out? There's something about writing out those prayers. Can anyone give me examples of prayers written out in the Bible? The Lord's Prayer. The Lord's Prayer. Most of the Psalms. I was going to say, like, half the book of Psalms. Jabez. Jabez. There are many prayers. So it, Jesus. Jesus, exactly. So it, it was fact more than once with Jesus. In fact, we find at one point Jesus goes and says a prayer, and, and the Bible says he came out, sees the sees him sleep, says, stay awake. Goes back and says he said the same exact prayer. Same words. Comes out, the, wake up. Goes and does it a third time. I hear people, you shouldn't say the same prayer more than once. Really? Because Jesus did it three times. And I do it all the time. So, yeah, good people have, what about vain repetitions? A vain repetition isn't saying the same prayer over. A vain repetition is saying something out of habit and not meaning it from your heart. You're saying it in vain. All right. So you write out that prayer, and then you spend time in prayer. You notice I didn't say say a prayer. Spend time. Time in prayer. Are you picking up the difference between say a prayer and send, spend time in prayer? I hope well, you are. You can say a prayer every night and it be the same prayer. You know, yeah. but when you spend time in prayer, it is from your heart, it is from you to God, it is gut wrenching sometimes. But yes. Absolutely, absolutely. How many couples in here would still be married? Would, Betty, would you still be married if Sam talked to you once a night and said, I love you, thank you for everything you did today, I appreciate it, good night? Yes, she would. <laughs> <laughs> Communication is a good deal. I tell you this much, she'd still be married, but they'd have had a talk. Yes, you're right. <laughs> I'm sorry. Sam had a talking too. Talk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so those yeah. are the methods to the those are the steps to the soap method. So we're going to be studying Jude three. I love Jude three. It is an amazing scripture verse. Jude, how many chapters in the book of Jude? Real quick, without looking. One. Good job. How many verses? Twenty-five. Yes. Good job. What do you got in front of you? No. Oh, good job. Good job. So, we're going to work with these pages tonight. Uh oh, I, I licked my finger. Don't tell Dr. Fauci. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> the other day I was in Myers. Uh, Meyer. Meyer. You're, you're getting to say it just like we do. Yeah, you know, that was in Meyer getting groceries. Meyer. I'm sitting there doing this, looking at something, and this commercial comes over. During this time of COVID, please don't touch your hands or your face. <laughs> so we are going to be going over Jude chapter 3. And it's written at the top of your page. We are going to go through this tonight together. I'm going to ask some of you to share your thoughts 
in your feelings. All right? So first thing we do, Scripture. Who wants to read for me? You don't have to read if you don't want to, but who would like to volunteer to read for me real quick? Thank you, Kathy. I appreciate that. <laughs> Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should be earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered to, unto the saints. Awesome. And you should earnestly contend for the faith. I love that. I love it. I hope you have. You know what? You have. Do you have your Bible with you tonight, Mommy? Would you mind reading that for me out of your Bible? You have the Message Bible, correct? Mm -hmm. the, the very first. Uh, verse 3. It says 3 and 4. Dear friends, I dropped everything to write you about this life of salvation that we have in common. I have to write inciting, begging that you fight with everything you have in you or this faith entrusted to us as a gift to guard and cherish. Why? has happened is that some people has influstered our rank and then in parenthesis as it says our scripture warned us this would happen who ben beneath their skin are shameless scoundrels their design is to replace the sheer grace of our God and sheer license which means doing away with Jesus Christ our one and only master powerful isn't it I'm going to read this to you out of the Passion Translation now. Dearly loved friend, I was fully intending to write to you about our amazing salvation we all participated in, but felt the need instead to challenge you to vigorously defend and contend for the beliefs that we cherish. For God, through the apostles, has once for all entrusted these truths to his holy believers. Everyone now. Says the same thing. It says the same thing, but it brings out different points of power, I think. Well, first thing we do, we've read the basic passage of the with. I need you to write it out for me real quick. Take just a couple minutes and write out what's right above you. It's right there at the top, Jude chapter 3. Yeah, here's the thing. I even put scripture on it so you don't need a Bible tonight. But you should have a Bible here, even if it's digital on your phone. Just write it out real quick. It's right at the top. Even if it's in your own language, write it out. It doesn't have to be word for word exact, but write it out. Just take a couple minutes doing this. And once again, as Bonnie said earlier, the reason why we write this out is because it gives you a better opportunity to, to cement it in your mind and memorize it. When you, I encourage people all the time to write out Scripture. Because when you start writing out Scripture, you're putting it to memory much easier than if you just read it and try to memorize it that way. So I always encourage people to write out Scripture verses. I know people who put together um, scripture rings, they call them. You get three by five cards, punch a little hole in all the corners, and get yourself just a little key ring. And then you put one scripture verse per card. And then when you get all those together for one topic, you can put like, you know, when Satan's coming against my mind, you can put on our mind of Christ. You pull that out, you have all those scripture verses that you can go through and read, and you can flip through on it and read. You got them right there. Uh, whenever I'm depressed, whenever I'm upset, Whenever I'm sad, whenever I need strength, whenever I need encouragement, whenever I'm feeling happy and don't know how to deal with it, you know, you can put these together as scripture readings. Everyone pretty much close to it? It's fun to hear them sing. <laughs> Do what? It's funny to hear them sing. I, and what was awesome is right when I stopped talking, you hear, The Bible <laughs> tells them, like, yeah, we're talking about studying the Word. <laughs> Come on, Jesus. The index cards that are in the binder, too, 
girls work pretty well. Yes. I had a girlfriend many years ago that went out for me. That was a very precious it, gift. It is amazing how you don't realize how many scriptures address whatever you're going through. And then you get one of those, you're like, well, there's like 30 things on here, right? And then you, in the midst of that situation, you pull it out, and you're like, yeah. praise God, I needed this, <laughs> you know? I, tell, I know tons of people who put together those um, scripture rings like that. Um, they're, they're all, I know one lady got like 30 of them. I'm Believe it or not, in our Thursday night meeting, we was just talking about how um, you put the scripture rings together mm -hmm. for people that you want to pray for. Yes. When you go on a trip or whatever, you know, you take them out if you're not doing nothing, and you pray for them. Or if they hit your mind, you pray for them. Or yeah read scripture, you put them on the car and you read it, you know. It's never a bad idea to write out and to read scripture. I'm just saying. <laughs> Alright, so everyone's written out scripture, right? Or close to it anyway? Okay, so what's the next one? Observation. So what do we do in observation? Let's go back and find it. So, just initially... We're going to call on people tonight. This is going to be very interactive tonight. This isn't going to just be Pastor up here talking tonight. Everyone say interactive. Interactive. No, say, like, say interactive. Interactive. That means me. <laughs> say that means me. That means you. No, I said say that means me. Say that means you. Say. They're tired. I made it work last night. That means all of us. Yes, it That can. means all of us. There we go. So, initially, raise your hands. What do you observe from the scripture? Just initially. It, it doesn't have to be profound. It doesn't have to be deep. Initially, just looking at it, what jumps out at you? Faith. Sharing the faith. Sharing the faith. Faith. Urgency. Urgency. Concern. Concern. That it's the same salvation for everyone. Same salvation for everyone? Good. Anyone else? It's to the saints. It's to the saints, yes. My favorite word out of this that jumps out and gets me every time is contend. Mm -hmm. Fight. Mm -hmm. Be diligent. Don't stop. It's different for everyone. So write that observation down. It can be one or two words. It doesn't have to even be like a full sentence. So what do you initially observe out of this? What is it initially saying to you? Don't touch the trees. That's concerning. <laughs> Probably my kids. Oh, trust me, she's got a good one in there tonight. <laughs> Is that one here? Yeah. Oh, that's awesome, Bobby. Thank you. All right. So, what does this mean to you now? When you get in this and you start, not just what word or one or two words jumps out to you, but what are you seeing as the meaning of the scripture? What do you think this this scripture is trying to convey to the to the readers? What is the meaning of this scripture? We have been given the power to share the faith to save others. We've been given the power to share faith to save others. Excellent. Salvation. And, it it, it talks about salvation. It talks about salvation. I'm just saying, what do you think this is? Like I said, it's not a trick question right, here. This right. is for you to learn how to study the Word and really get into it. What is it saying in verse 3 here? It belongs to the Jews and the Gentiles. It, ooh, salvation yeah. for the Jews and Gentiles. I love yeah. it. It also says that we should continue to fight for our faith, even when we're challenged. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, because it says begging that you fight. Wow. Um, now, I'm going to read out of... Now, remember, there are translations of the Bible, and there are paraphrases of the Bible. The Message Bible, Passion, they, they call them translations, they're paraphrases. I also have one that is called the Bible in Basic English. And I like it because it is it really breaks it down. And um, to me, like I asked my brother today, what does Jude chapter 3 mean to you? And he goes, the Passion Translation... He goes, you read that? That's what 
Uh, that, that's how I see Jude chapter 3, is the, the Passion Translation. And what are you going to read from now? Uh, this is the Bible in basic English. And it said, My loved ones, while my thoughts were full of a letter which I was going to send you about our common salvation, that we all have the same salvation, it, he realizes it was necessary for me to send you one requesting you with all my heart to go on fighting strongly for the faith, which has been given to the saints once and forever. He said, I had planned on writing you a letter about how we all have the same salvation. And then I, God spoke to me and said, No, you need to write a letter encourage them to continue fighting for the faith. It is for all saints. It is a common salvation for everyone. It doesn't matter Jew first, Gentile, free man, or slave. We all have the same salvation, Jesus. So instead of me writing about that, God's saying, I need to write and encourage you to fight for that faith that we have. Fight to protect it. Fight to continue to, to spread that gospel. That's my observation I make. Anyone else? Living and Living said the same, the similar wording to yours where it's like there was what he planned to do and then the Holy Spirit said, no, do this. And which it was a, like an interruption of what his plan was. Which I love that because you see here that Jude knows how to move and flow in the Spirit. That's what you want. You want to be able to flow in the Spirit. I can tell you there have been times that I had my message prepared for Sunday on Monday afternoon. And it was good. <laughs> And they've got to change this Sunday then, morning. <laughs> yeah, like at 3 in the morning. 3 in the morning. 3 in the morning seems to be the time. <laughs> or I've also had it happen where I'm in church. We're all sitting out there having coffee. I look down and it says 10, 15. I'm like, okay, we got to Oh, what, God? Okay. And <laughs> I'm like, all right, well, you kind of waited, God. <laughs> you know. And then there have been times where, like I said, God gave it to me on Sunday before I got out of the pulpit and finished the previous message, God told me I was doing it and he moved. It, God can give it to you at any time. Are you willing to flow in that spirit? Are you willing to change directions if you need to? Amen. Anyone ever watched an airplane fly, especially when it's coming in for a landing? Mm -hmm. See, an airplane, when it flies, it doesn't just fly where it wants to go. It follows air currents. And can an airplane fly against it? Yes. But an airplane, for the most part, they do everything they can to make an airplane fly with the currents. You ever see a picture that looks like the plane's kind of crooked coming in for a landing, and then it straightens out when it hits? It's because it's following airflow, air currents. It doesn't happen all the time, but they do it as often as they can because it saves on fuel. And anyone in Indiana knows, especially if you're riding down towards Lafayette, you get in the middle of all those... Um, windmills, the wind can pick up to 60 miles an hour, and you may have had a half a tank of gas <laughs> before you hit that spot, and by the time you're done, you got to pull over and refuel. Anyone know what I'm talking about there? Yes. I told Betty today, I said, never has it took me four tanks of gas to go to Lafayette. And that's saying something, because you're a lead foot. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Not with Betty, though. <laughs> So you have the observation part down, correct? She knows I like this. <laughs> all right, so the next step is application. I'm going to all take a couple minutes here. I will continue to talk at this end. You know, I want you to concentrate on what, write down how this scripture applies to you personally. How does this scripture apply to you personally? How does the scripture, the scripture talking about, we all have a common salvation. I was going to write to you about that, but God's telling me now to write to you, tell you to contend, to fight for the faith. Especially in a time like now, I, I hope that it really speaks to you. I, I know so many pastor friends who were contending just to be able to preach the faith. You can see how you can actually, once you get this method down, you can do it in, it, it doesn't have to take you a really long time in the morning to do this.
You can actually do it really, really quick. And, and, and like I said, I think it's, I think it's really, it's, it really can do a lot for you. I'm sitting here, and God just spoke to me about something. To add. I'm actually literally um, making a new slide right now as we speak. How does this apply to my life? How does this apply to me personally today? How does this apply to me today. Does anyone want to share a little bit? You don't have to if you don't want to. Anyone want to share about how this applies to you today? You gotta try to control yourself instead of putting them in their place to let them know what's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yes. You know, in a godly way. So I don't know. You gotta try to keep keep your faith. You know. Try to remember that when you first asked God to save you, and you were on fire for God, and you know, because you were saved forty years, you kind of. Sometimes they're slacking, they're slacking. That's true. Well, when you, you first get, get tired, <laughs> when you first get saved, all these Christians have been saved for years don't realize I can go out and get the whole world saved. Give me five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then you've been saved for ten years and it hasn't happened yet, so you're you just defeated because you didn't do what you said I have to do because you were lazy. Okay, so if you listen to <laughs> some of these preachers that's been on the news and stuff, you could get falsely junk in your head. Yes, absolutely. Um, you yeah. got stay with this right here. Yes. Actually, now more than ever, I think it's easier for a Christian to fall for a wolf in sheep's clothing because, I mean, has it ever been a time in history where the gospel has been out there so heavy as it is now at, between uh, internet and television? Mm -hmm. So, you know. When they invented Facebook, they invented the whole world to know there's a God, you need to be saved, if not, you're going to hell. Come on. And the Bible says every ear will hear. Yes. So. And you know what's amazing about that is, um, like, like in Uganda, we know a pastor in Uganda. He helps on the internet, on Facebook, and he has a show every Sunday, and he does talking to his people during COVID and everything. He was doing exactly like I did. And we immediately, as as Americans, think, well, no way in Africa they have a... Hey, dude's got the internet. He's got an iPhone. He's got a show, you know? And I'm not trying to take away from him. I'm trying to make we, the American church, understand and realize there's, there's an ability to reach the world now. Yep. And as you said, the Bible said, when every ear is heard. Yep. So we, we need to wake up. Right. I, I say it all the time. Every day is one day closer. Right. And as I heard someone else say one time, cheer up, it just gets worse from here. <laughs> I've read the Bible. <laughs> all right, so anyone else want to share their application? One person shared their application. I would say that a lot of times we're going about our day. We have our own plans, and if we're not open and willing to be uh, <laughs> uh, to have our attention taken by God to do what we plan, oh, 
you know, then we're we're gonna miss it. We're gonna miss what he's trying to tell us or teach us. I, I love that part about it too. Um, it, when you really look at that one scripture verse, there's just so much in there. The Jude says, <laughs> "Yeah, I was gonna do this, but." but. <laughs> My dad, my dad preached a sermon one time about a big butt in the middle of the yeah. <laughs> Just like you. And, and it's so true, though. Um, but, you know, I was going to do this. Instead, God told me to do this. And you know what's funny? He didn't say, how many things I need to do what the Lord tells me. He didn't ask, did he? He just did it. Nope. I don't get me wrong. That that for for the longest time, that's appreciated. How many believes I should do what the Lord says? Well, if anyone in there says no, you need to run them out of the church anyway, or get them up to the altar and get them saved. One of the two. <laughs> I, I I hated when guys did, and I had friends that did it. Okay, my dad did it. How many say, things I should do what the Lord is telling me to do? No. <laughs> he doesn't ask, does he? He just does it. I wasn't going to do this. God said no, so here's what you get. I love that. And then he says, keep fighting for the faith. It's for everyone. And it's the same faith that you and I received that made us saints today. I love it. It's just a great verse. Anybody else, before we move on, want to cover application? Okay, now it's probably us a while, but here it is. Even though times get hard, as long as we believe, our salvation doesn't change because God doesn't, doesn't change. His promises don't change. He's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Awesome. It's not off the wall because it's applying, you're applying that scripture to your life right now. So it's never going to be off the wall. You might be a little cuckoo for Coca Puss, but that scripture in the way it applies your life is. <laughs> I love you, <laughs> and, and by the way, what's also expression? You don't have to be crazy to attend this church, but it helps. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> How's it going? Wait a minute. I volunteered to come here as Patty. <laughs> God knew what he was doing. All right, so the last part, prayer. Take a minute or two. And write out a small prayer. At, and base, just write. It doesn't have to be this great, or you know, you don't have to come off with this amazing, poetic, beautiful, awesome half hour long prayer. We're not, we're not looking, I'm not going to say, for prayers of other denominations that tend to be long because thank you, Lord, for the farmer that planted the, the, the seed that became the corn, that became the fuel, that provided the heat for this church tonight so we could meet and and no, I'm not talking that. I want a Pentecostal prayer. In it. Just, it, just something that gets to the meat of what you're trying to say. Saying, Lord, I see how you want me to apply this scripture to my life. I see what it's saying. Will you help me do it? And that's the whole purpose of the prayer aspect of writing down a prayer. God, I want you to work this in my life. Now, once you write that prayer down, you would at this point in time then start off using that prayer and then go into a time of prayer. Five minutes, ten minutes, thirty minutes, an hour. I'm, I'm impressed. Nobody looked at me when I said an hour. I said, an hour? Who prays for an hour? I don't know. Jesus said, could you not watch and tarry for one hour? <laughs> And then you would spend time in prayer. Now, I really felt God tell me to add this at the end, so it's going to be at the end here. Do this in the morning if you can. Ideally. I tell people people all the time, well, when in the morning supposed to do it before I go to work? Wake up an hour early if you have to. And then they're like, well, you know, hey, how serious are you about God? Because here's the thing, when I wait on God and I wait on the Lord, what's He going to do for me? Exactly. He's going to help me get through the day. It doesn't mean it's going to be an easy day. In fact, the more reading and praying I'm doing, guess what? 
the harder my day's going to get. I just put a target on my back. And Satan sees it. It's like glowing neon lights here, here, you know? And Satan is really mad at this time. Betty said, we was talking today, and she said that today. And I, and I thought about that when I went home. I thought about it when she said it. Satan really is mad right now. Oh, yeah, he is. He is really mad. His time's getting short. Yes. And he knows it. Exactly. Exactly. So if you can't do this in the morning, like I said, if you have to wake up an hour early, and uh, past my goodness, wake up half an hour early. How far are you willing to go to grow in your relationship with God and see Him moving your life? Are you willing to wake up 30 minutes earlier? Well, I might have to go to bed earlier. I only get to sit around the fire with Sam and Betty until 10 <laughs> instead of 11. <laughs> <laughs> it is nine for us now. It ain't, I go before that. <laughs> hey, hey, deal with it. That's what I say, deal with it. Who you want to get close to, Sam and Betty or God? You can. That's what I'm saying. But if you got to make a choice, if you absolutely had to make a choice, Kathy. Obviously, God, but Sam and Betty, he them there we're, we're, we're not calling, you know, calling them idols. We're putting them before God or anything. Yeah. But, you know. but, <laughs> hey, this much there's I that, there's oh, that word, but. Let me say this much, though, that I do know. If God told Betty to, she'd look in your face and say, hey, you need to go home because God sure. wants you to wake up early tomorrow in prayer. I know that much about her. I know she would. That means if you can't do this in the morning, I highly, highly encourage it so that in the evening before we go to bed, we can... Have reflection. In the evening, pull this page back out or any page wherever you've written this all down and reflect on it. Ask yourself, did I accomplish what I was wanting to accomplish in my prayer? Did I allow God to direct me to be able to accomplish what I wanted to? Or did I, you know, step in because I know what I need to do and, and, and God just needs to understand that? I see, I know a guy in Georgia, if I'd have said that, he'd have been shucking corn, pastor shucking corn. <laughs> yeah, getting down to where it really counts, getting out off the outside, getting rid of that outside stuff, getting down to the part you like, the good stuff. Shucking corn. corn. You're just not well, I know what it is, but I've never heard it in a spiritual sense. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> we are real hillbillies. <laughs> hey, I got I'm not. I was just in Georgia for 24 years. I ain't never lived down south, but I really am. <laughs> I can tell. Uh, so, you know. <laughs> well, I've shucked corn, but I've never put it in a spiritual connotation. Well, you're getting down to the part that really matters. Getting past all that outside, getting down to what counts. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Come on. Hang on just a second. I gotta let them know we're closing back there. But, um, so, this here is just another method that I like, that I've picked up actually in the last couple of years. I had heard about it for years, I haven't really tried it until about the last two. So, um, it's called the soap method. I guess if you put reflection at the end, the soaper. <laughs> the thing I like about it is, even if you're busy, you can make copies at home and you can do this in 10, 20 minutes in the morning before you leave for work. You really can. Make copies of this. If you need copies, I got some up here at the home. Make more copies. We got the church copy in here. If you want some copies, I'll make you some. I'll make some copies, please. All right, I will. Like and please. do this. Do it. And you, like I said, and after a while, you'll reach a point where you won't need this anymore. You'll be able to just get a notebook out. I know what I need to do real quick, you know. But do it. Spend time studying the Word, getting to know God. Okay? I. 
is very important. How many remembers the message I preached about what chair you sit in? Do you sit in the chair of I'm always studying the Bible, or do you sit in the chair where I'm always in the Holy Spirit and I need to feel the goosebumps and I need to jump, shout, and run? You want to sit in the chair on the edge. Because I've had kids for so long, I need to be able to get out with them if I need Does to. Does anyone remember that message when I preached about four chairs? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, there we go. Somebody did. I said yes. Oh, thank you. In fact, who was it I had stained on the chair for me? I would have had somebody stand on it and tried to push him off. Yeah, yeah I remember now. It might have been, I think it was Brad. And then I remember I had him put a. I said, but when you get into the Word and the Holy Spirit simultaneously, had a foot on each chair, you get balanced. Yeah. I couldn't. Okay. That's what part of this is about tonight. Getting you into that chair at least once a day where you're studying the Word. Get into that green chair is the color green. Studying the Word. Education. Getting into the Word. Have we had any comments? I didn't even... Oh, huh. Brett's watching. You can always ask him. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Brett. Brett, was it you? <laughs> I'm pretty positive it was Brett. I just realized that I didn't share it and I didn't watch it. Usually I'm on here waiting for... Usually uh, your brother's on there. I was like, usually I'm waiting for uh, responses from my brother to, to be Mr. Funny Guy. It's going to be nice having you, him, and your dad all three together. Sean Matthew I don't, I don't mean my brother's going to be here. I don't know when my dad's going to be here. Well, you and your brother... That's going to be interesting. Oh, you have no idea how interesting that's going to be. August, I think. Where, I'm, already, <laughs> I'm already talking to my brother about when he's up here in August. Um, we're looking at having... Um, oh, hi, Angie. <laughs> hi, Bonnie Walker. <laughs> hi, Sean. Um, well, my brother... Let's finish this. Okay, let's finish this. <laughs> <laughs> so... In the, at, when you get home at the end of the day, please, before you go to bed, pull this back out. Pull your notebook back out, however you're doing it. Look it over and reflect on, did I get any of this accomplished? Did this speak in my life? And what you, you know what you're going to find out? It's going to be amazing how many times going forward this is going to take such a center stage in your life in the middle of the day and you had no clue. I'm just telling you. I'm te DJ, how many times? Has it happened at least once or twice that the study that you did oh, yeah. worked into your day one way or another? Oh, yeah, I, all the time. <laughs> uh, I used to write out lessons all the time and stuff. That's exactly how I do it. Um, and my mom even made the comment. My mom does it. Of course, my mom's a little old-fashioned. But she made the comment that it, it's, it's almost like the mechanics of it. She just absorbs better when she reads and physically writes it out. Yeah, she says that she just retains it and it processes it, the information better. Especially for somebody that doesn't read very well like me. If I write it out, it helps me. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. We're going to go ahead and um, say goodbye to our online viewers of Facebook. We Bye, got Brett. <laughs> <laughs> He's the only one. No, there was four people on. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. We love you guys. We will see you Sunday morning. God bless you guys.